Welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and on today's retro gaming journey, we're taking a look at Extreme G3. Extreme G3 goes by the full name XG3 Extreme G Racing, which sounds a bit redundant if you ask me. I also never picked up on that being its name as a kid, but who can blame me when the game's case stylizes the XG3 part like this? Either way, we're looking at a futuristic racing game akin to F-Zero or Wipeout. Wipeout in particular is a fair comparison here, and plays a part in Extreme G3's creation. The developer of Extreme G3 is acclaimed studios Cheltenham, which was founded in 2000 and is made up of former developers from Psygnosis. This studio was behind many of the Wipeout games. It's also worth pointing out that Acclaim Studios London closed in 2000 due to Acclaim Entertainment consolidating its studios. Acclaim Studios London was formerly operating as Probe Software, which was the developer of the first two Extreme G games on the N64. It seems likely that with Acclaim Studios London closing in 2000 and Acclaim Studios Cheltenham opening that same year, some of the previous staff from Probe Software would make their way over to the new development studio. Basically, Extreme G3 has a pedigree behind it that cements its developers as veterans in the futuristic racing genre, even if Acclaim Studios Cheltenham was only founded a year before the game's release. That's enough with the history lesson. Now let's talk about the game. Extreme G3 starts players off with the choice of joining one of several racing teams as their newest member. Players can pick whichever team they want, except for Starcom as it's locked at first. As there's no difference between the teams, you can basically just pick your collar and fancy future motorcycle of your choice. Once that's all said and done, players can compete in a few different game modes. That includes League, Arcade, and Time Trial. League is the main mode players are going to care about. It has them taking on a series of tracks to win money and trophies. Doing so lets them progress to new tracks as well as higher level racing classes. Money is actually one of the most important things in Extreme G3. Each league actually requires the player to win a certain amount of money to move forward. That means players could do well in the first couple of races and only have to come in third or fourth to advance in the last race. On the flip side of that, if you don't do well enough in the initial races, you might find yourself needing a first place finish to complete the league. Even worse is the sheer brutality of Extreme G3. If the player loses a league race, the game kicks them back to the start with no money. That means players will be doing a lot of saving between races and loading up old saves to avoid this. The money that players do collect has a purpose. New parts. The XG Mall carries a variety of new equipment that you'll want to pick up to make it further in the game. Chief among these are larger engines that support faster speeds. There are also other enhancements, such as larger shields and weapon containers, as well as items that make charging these two things faster. If players have to choose between one of these things, focus on shields more than weapons. Boosting in the game requires the use of shield energy, and more of that is always needed. The other racers in the game won't go easy on you, and well-timed boost can make all the difference in winning or losing a league race. If players do have enough extra money for weapons, there's no shame in grabbing some. That's because it's possible to completely remove an enemy rider from the race by blowing them up. The best way to do this is to wait until close to the end of a lap and check nearby racers' shields with quick pokes of your weapon. If the shield flashes red or orange, it might be worth it to take them out with the full power of your weapons before you come across shield recharge strips. Also, it's important to take care to not let your own shields get too low either. Enemies have weapons as well and aren't afraid to blast players off the course when given the chance. And just like with the enemies, players are out of the race if that happens and it's time to reload an old save. There's no denying that Extreme G3 is an incredibly hard game to beat. Having to play the same tracks over and over again to advance can be a real drain, and taking a break is actually a bad idea. I did this a couple of times while playing this game for review, and every time I came back to the game, I had to spend the first couple of races getting the hang of its intricacies again. However, I do have to note that mastering this game is a fun experience. The challenge is definitely up there, but there's so much satisfaction that comes from beating a race that you've been stuck on that it makes it all worth it. In addition to all of this, Extreme G3 really blows players away with its presentation. The sheer sense of speed that it conveys is right up there with the best of the futuristic racing genre. It even does some cool things that are unique to it, such as breaking the sound barrier. This happens when the player reaches a speed of 750 miles per hour. Doing so has the game hit players with this kind of whoosh sound, and it cuts out all of the audio except for the rushing wind as you leave the sound of your own engine behind you. Warning, shields run. It's just such a cool feeling, and not one that I've seen, or should I say heard, executed this masterfully in any other game. 
If it's not clear by this point, I've got a lot of love for Extreme G3. That's probably due to the fact that it was my first PS2 game I ever bought. I picked up two games when I bought my PS2. One was Mega Man X5, and the other was Extreme G3. Funny story about that. Kid me didn't realize I needed a PS2 memory card for PS2 games, so I didn't buy one alongside my PS2. Instead, I just had to start Extreme G3 over and over and over again when I wanted to play it. I did eventually pick a memory card up, but until then, it resulted in me playing a lot of PS1 games I could borrow from friends instead. Basically, I had a PS2 for months, and spent most of that time playing PS1 games. Doesn't sound much different than owning a PS5 now, does it? So what are my closing thoughts on Extreme G3? It's an incredibly fun game that also comes with an incredible amount of challenge. The racing is dang fun, but the lack of balance between the importance of buying engine upgrades or weapon upgrades could leave new players frustrated if they want all the shiny fun weapons first. Still, it does the futuristic racing thing well, and I've got no issue recommending it as a great game to play to this day. If you're interested in picking up Extreme G3, I'm sad to say it's only available via its original release on PS2 and GameCube. However, the game's still pretty cheap to buy and completely worth it. Thanks for watching, and consider subscribing if you like what I'm doing here. And until next time, take it easy! Congratulations! You are the XG3 Champion!